Welcome back to Hucho's. Today on Hucho's, I'm gonna be showing you how to grow capsicums or bell peppers in a low maintenance wicking hydroponic system. I'll be taking you from seed through to system and all the way to harvest. We'll have a time lapse and a discussion about my thoughts on this new method of growing. Okay, so to start with propagation. For the propagation of these bell peppers, I started the seeds in Jiffy Peat pellets. Now, I have a video on how to start seeds in Jiffy Peat pellets, but essentially I rehydrated the Jiffy Peat pellets, added in the seeds, and put them into propagation domes. Those propagation domes I then placed into my DIY propagation shelving unit, which is also available in another video. I just purchased some shelving and some 36 watt LED office lights, which then fit perfectly within that shelving unit, which I have been using ever since for the propagation of all my seedlings. So there is a whole video on the bagging method. I have actually reduced the size of the bag that I'm using because it means that you have to use less grow media. And at the end of the video, you'll see that the results are incredible. Here I have a roll of black poly tubing. We cut this to size seal the end, and we have a two cent grower's pot. Into this grower's pot, we can add in a customized soilless grow media, a cocoa which is amended with perlite. We then fill our pot and we can add in our plant, which we've propagated at home for about 10 cents. Water it in with a hydroponic nutrient solution. and add it into our hydroponic system. From here, I gathered all of my bell pepper plants and moved them up to the greenhouse. I set up the system in the same way as I set up the grow spike system in my grow spike hydroponic system video. Now in that video, I used a 3D print. However, this is not strictly necessary. I have developed a way of creating the rain gutter grow system, grow spike system without 3D prints. And that is by using the gutter itself and heat bending the PVC gutter so that the ends are bent up and can house a float valve, as well as cutting out protrusions that allow you to then thread the wick through and place the bagged mix over the top of, piercing into that bag mix and allowing the wick to wick out into those bags. And as you can see, the system is working wonderfully. The float valve is topping up the system and all of the bags are wicking incredibly well. I'm really happy with how this system is performing. And as you can see, I've got potatoes, bagged potatoes, sweet potato, taro in front of me, and glangal. So a nice mix of different plants that I'm testing out in the bagged media. And because I was having such a good result from these caps, which were in the larger bags, I kind of wanted to push my luck and see how small we could get those bags to not only reduce the bag cost, but to also reduce the media cost because these are about 10 to 15 liters and the smaller bags are only five liters. I wanted to see if we'd have much of a difference in growth. So I set up the system with the grow spikes and pierced my bell peppers onto the system and set up some time-lapse cameras.
And will you have a look at that result? I am blown away by how well this bagging method is working. These are some of the healthiest capsicum bell pepper plants that I have ever seen and I am stoked with this method. We have fruit set on a heap of the plants and not just the capsicums, we have fruit set on the peas and in the background you can see all of the tomatoes that I've got in the bag system are fruiting as well. Now that whole time lapse was about a month. So in that month we went from seedling through to mature plant and fruiting plants as well. Although you can see here that the plants that are fruiting are actually in these larger bags because they were planted a lot earlier than the plants with the smaller bags. And they were also pollinated, I believe, outside of the greenhouse. So that's one thing I'll need to get better at is pollinating within the greenhouse because the insects aren't doing my job for me. But you can see we've got fruit set on all of the older plants so I expect that the younger plants will also start setting fruit very soon because they're a few weeks behind. So what I want to do now for you is I want to take one of these plants off the system and show you how the roots are interacting with the system essentially. So what I'm expecting is that the roots have made their way down into the reservoir. I want to assess how much of that root ball is actually down in the res. So let's take the support off this plant. Okay, so you can see the plant has made it all the way down into the reservoir. Um, that is the grow spike. If I take that out, it's actually gonna kill the plant, um, which I'm okay with doing because, you know, science. This is a perfectly healthy capstone too. I'm a little bit upset about doing this. All right. Uh, come to the operating table. Okay, so I'll just show you the bottom. You can see where the roots are making their way through that grow spike and how it's punctured into the bag. So I'm just going to, there we go. And you can see Look at that. You can see how the roots radiate out from the grow spike itself. And you can even see how the roots are following that wick um, down and into the reservoir. If I pull this apart, there you go. So that's the grow spike. That is the roots following it down and into the reservoir below. Now, I don't really want to do more damage than I've already done to this plant because I am actually going to try and repot it. But I really did want to show you, like you can see how the wicking action is working. Now, I've actually had a few people ask me, how are the plant's roots meant to make their way down to the wicks? Well, they're not. The wicks are meant to deliver nutrients up to the grow media, which then wicks it out into the bag. And you can see that happening. You can see it happening here where the media is saturated and it is still wet even with the plant sending its roots through the grow spike. What this means is that the plant has both standard media roots but it can also have hydroponic roots which means that it sends its roots into the nutrient solution and there would be some amount of dissolved oxygen within that solution which its hydroponic roots can utilize. It can suck the nutrient out of the reservoir underneath as well as utilizing the grow media in a more traditional uptake of nutrients. So I'm gonna try and put this into another bag. Let's see how this goes. Come on, buddy. Back to our system. Tie him back up. 
and you saw within that bag, the roots aren't lacking any space at all, and they're really healthy. This bag size is perfect because you've got to remember, this bag isn't limited to just the bag. You've got the entire reservoir underneath, and with the plants having access to all the nutrients and water that they could ever need, they really don't need that large of a root system to go looking for it. So the plants can then focus on leaf, stalk, and fruit production, which is exactly what we want them to do. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. Plenty of caps in my future, and I hope there's plenty of bell peppers in yours too. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time. Hmm, on Who Chose. <laughs>